Hello, 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 hello. How y'all doing? All right, I am going to do a healing this evening. I'm actually doing a cord cutting and um, an overall healing, and I will be going wherever I am led to go in the session. So I've been asked to do um, a cord cutting and healing on two individuals. So this session is going to be for two. Um, I've already um, allowed some cards to fall out so that you don't have to be bleeding while I do that. And so um, I have two cards for each person and we're gonna see what comes to me when it gets time for that, okay? So um, I guess we will go ahead and get started. I was just doing a little meditation and chanting before I got started. So I'm gonna turn the music down a little bit. All right. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> All right, so I've done my prayers. And we are working with the ancestors today. And I have asked the two individuals, I've asked for their ancestors to get involved with this um, session as well. And we have done some work um, on these two before their siblings. So we are going to go ahead and begin. So, <sighs> okay. So first, um, I'm just going to look at the first individual and um, he's a male. So I'm gonna look at him first and see what I see. <sighs> okay, so as I'm looking at him right now, okay, so I'm looking at him, he is covered. As I look at him, I feel like a sensation over my body and it's actually in the same areas where he's covered. No, not all over. So I feel a sensation in here that kind of went up and it felt like, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it felt like a little energy moving up in my body um, when I was looking at him. So what I see when I look at him, it is a little bit, um, it's a darkish color around him. <sighs> okay, so I'm seeing a darkish color. It gets a little lighter down in here. Um, I'm seeing like a brownish color, like a pretty brownish color. And then it um, kind of ombres down and gets a little bit lighter, but it's still, I can't see through it except for maybe on the top part of his thighs. And so I can see one leg that is very free to move. One leg is kind of bound and a little bit stuck. Um, the energy that I see over him, the brown color goes into a darker grayish blackish color and it goes all the way up. This energy is not through his body. It is in his space. So it is in his aura, okay? Um, okay, so this energy makes him feel, I'm hearing the words unprotected. So this energy makes him feel unprotected, cloudy, and confused. Unprotected, cloudy, and confused. And the energy is from many sources. It's not from one source. It is not a spirit being, so it's not an entity, which is, that's good. I don't have to do an exorcism, removing entities tonight. All right, so, alrighty. So I'm just gonna release this energy. Woo, that was a lot of sage. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna release this energy right now and just kind of clear it out. I'm just chanting a little bit. 
Triambakam. That is the mantra I was chanting before we got started. And that mantra helps to ward off negative energies, negative entities. I often chant before I get started. Sometimes I chant during. All right. All right, let me look at him now. Okay, so as I'm moving that out of the way, which interesting is that he has um, a covering around him that is totally black, like he put a black outfit on. So he has a covering around him and it's going around his body, um, not wrapping his body, but it's kind of going around his body like he's in like a cylinder. And it just looks like it's like a layer of protection. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I was asking um, Spirit first, if I were to move this out of the way, was this protecting him? Was this doing some work? And the answer I got was no, it's not really doing anything. It's kind of blocking him. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I feel like somebody else may have felt like they were giving him some protection, excuse me, protection or something and kind of put something up, but it really wasn't doing anything. It was really kind of blocking his space. And I'm, the words I'm hearing is that it wasn't giving him free will. So this um, black barrier that was placed around him wasn't allowing him to have free will. And free will is very, very important um, <clears throat> when healing um, and when sending healing. Sometimes we send healing to people and you just have to be careful that you're not imposing your will on somebody else. Um, and you should always ask their spirit um, if it is okay, you know, to give, send them some energy. I know I've had people to say, well, I'm going to send you some energy. And I'd be like, please don't, you know, because sometimes people's energy is so funky. And I'm like, what the hell I want your energy for? Please keep it to yourself. <laughs> but anyway, okay. <laughs> So anyway, just be careful because I know a lot of us, we love to pray for people and give to people and heal people and send them love. And please, you know, you, you just don't know that when you connect with someone in that way, you can transfer some of what you have to them. And if you're going through a rough time, why would you want to share that? I mean, I'm just, I'm really being honest right now. <laughs> okay, so now let me look at him. Okay, let me turn this back around because I got all my liquids over here. I got my water, my tea. <laughs> all right, so anyway, so let's see what we're doing. All right, so that is kind of getting swept away. So you really got to know what you're doing when, uh, when you're sending healing to others. Make sure you're grounded and protected and make sure you're not courting with that person. You know, it's a, it's a lot that goes into this, you know? So don't just willy nilly be trying to do something. I keep my protection up <laughs> because people love to be sending you stuff. So I kind of keep protection up so that it could just nicely goes back to them. All right. All right, so now I'm going to do an exercise that I teach my class and it's called running your energy. So I'm going to run some energy through his body right now um, to just clear him up before I go into cord cutting. So I'm just taking some nice healing energy and it really, wow, it feels really good. It feels intense. 
it feels like his body needs this, wants this, um, and craves this, the energy from the earth. It feels like he's not getting any energy from the earth. He's not getting um, grounded. He's not, um, he needs to get out in nature. I'm hearing like walk around outside a little bit and just breathe some of the fresh air, as fresh as air as it could be. You know, take in some deep breaths, you know. Maybe walk around. I know some people say you shouldn't walk around on the ground barefoot, but that's what I keep hearing for him. So I'm just gonna go with that, that he should, you know, take his shoes off and just go outside and walk around in the grass a little bit and just breathe some fresh air, just inhale, exhale. I feel like that's what he needs to do right now. It's just breathe some fresh air, inhaling and exhaling. All right. So anyway, I'm going to run this energy from the earth through his body right now. And like I said, it really feels intense. Um, the body is like kind of slurping it up and I'm taking it through his legs right now. And now I'm sending it through his pelvic region. And as I'm sending this energy through, it's just healing and moving any stuck and stagnant energy that's going on in his legs right now. It's moving, 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 moving all the stuck energy. Now I'm going up his torso and I'm focusing on his spine right now. Now I'm sending the energy through his arms, his neck, down his arms, out his hand chakras and into his aura. All right, now I'm going up his head, filling his head with that great healing energy from the earth. And now I'm going out of his crown chakra back into his aura. All righty. So now I'm just looking at him with his earth energy running through his body. Now I'm just looking at any spots where I might need to do some healing work. Okay, so I felt a pain body. Um, where am I? This would be his left shoulder, kind of like in his left shoulder area. Felt a little bit of pain up body, just a little bit of tension. And I do, um, um, it's called Flotrition and it's a method that I learned from a chiropractor and um, it, well, it's called Flotrition. I work with the spine, um, kind of like chiropractic care, but not chiropractic. It's um, a method developed for practitioners. So I was told to do Flotrition on him. So I'm going to do that right now while the energy from the earth is running through his body. So now I'm just going to go down his spine and see what I feel since I was told to come here. Okay, so I'm feeling why I was told to come here. Sometimes the vertebrae is out of alignment. Um, when I always say feelings buried alive never die. All right, so when the feelings go to the nerve endings, they go to your nerve endings, right? You got nerve endings in your eyes, your hands, your feet, in your spine. Okay, so let's say you don't release um, uh, emotional pain, then that signal will go to your spine, okay? And the fluids are flowing down your spine, you know, like spinal fluids. And let's say that energy starts to manifest into a physical um, manifestation. So then what happens is sometimes those physical manifestations that end on your spinal cord could 
pull your vertebrae out of alignment because it could just cause a pulling. Like it could cause a pulling on a muscle that can pull the vertebrae out of alignment. It could actually maybe push whatever. But so what I do, I can find the vertebrae that are out of alignment and help move them back into alignment, you know? So like if you have scoliosis and things of that nature, like there's a way to help get the spine back into alignment and help those fluids to be moving down your spine. And then there's a way that I teach in my practice where you can use your breath um, to correct your own spinal alignment just through breathing in in there but anyway that's a whole different subject <laughs> and a whole lot of um information but that's what i'm working on right now okay so i'm working on the spine and like i said it's called flotrition <sighs> when i yawn i'm releasing energy i'm not tired <laughs> I'm not being rude, yawning in your face. I'm just releasing energy that might be stuck and stagnant. And now I'm gonna do some breaths for him. All right, all right, so now let's see what we see. All right, so, okay, so now I'm gonna do some more energy work. I'm gonna bring some cosmic energy down through his body and I'm taking it down his spinal cord and I'm mixing it with the energy from the earth and I'm sending it all the way down to just push anything that's left, any stagnant residue from that old emotional pain body. And I am sending that down his grounding cord so it could be neutralized and sent back to where it came from. All righty. Now I'm letting the rest of the cosmic energy mix with the earth energy through his body. It's going through his aura right now. It's mixing with the earth energy in his aura. And it's just kind of giving him a cleansing, you know, a cleaning out, okay? All right, I'm going down his torso, going through all the organs in his torso. All right, going to his pelvic region and down his legs, knees, calves, feet. Okay. All right. All right, let me look at his spiritual cord. All right, his spiritual cord looks fine right now. Earlier, that other energy with that brownish color and then the darker grays and blacks before they were going up, um, they weren't inside of the spiritual connection, but they were kind of like in front of it going up. Just, um, I don't know, it felt like a barrier it just didn't feel like that energy needed to be there. It just felt like a barrier. Like I was saying, it was a collection of energies. All right, now I'm gonna go to the first card that I pulled for him. And this card is um, what your soul wants you to know. And it is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And that's the picture, I'm sorry, okay? And this picture has two people down, kind of like in a prayer position. And then it looks like they're kneeling on the ground, okay? And this is interesting, because it feels like as above, so below, because it shows two people underground and it looks like roots 
okay? And then, and then there are roots in between them, like they're kneeling over and praying. And then in between them, it looks like roots go down and it feels like <clears throat> grounding, honestly. That's like the picture that I get. But um, it looks like Okay, so what it says is defenseless, righting past wrongs, and uprooting, uprooting. All right. This is very interesting. This picture is interesting because what I'm feeling from the I'm sorry, when I get the defensive, defenselessness, righting past wrongs, and uprooting, um, for him, I'm feeling like the work that we've been doing is releasing old first chakra energies, um, releasing energy from his lineage, releasing energy that has been buried, um, and just releasing it and letting it go. I feel like that's what this work is doing um, that we've been doing over the past month. We have been going in, digging it up, uncrossing, uncording, you know, healing, and just really, really um, releasing the old stuck energy, the old wounds, even though the work that we did today on the spine um, was an old wound. I didn't read what the wound was from, but it was an old wound, um, emotional situation that turned physical. Emotional situation, I'm hearing six years, okay? <laughs> so um, an emotional situation from six years ago that he buried and you know, it just starting to manifest. So then it was affecting the spine where it was manifesting. So that's what we worked on. So that's what I'm getting from this card. I'm sorry. Um, so, and then the next card was called, and I know what this card is all about because I feel like every time I do a session with you, I get this card and it says called it's called. And um, there's a big open door there. And it's talking about your soul's gifts and training. It's time to step it up. And I'm going to say it until you do start stepping it up because, you know, the work is being done on, on our end. You know, we're doing the healing work and everything, but now you've got to step it up. You've got to step up. You've got to actively participate in your healing. You've got to actively participate in your wellness. You have to actively participate in learning about who you are, learning about your gifts, learning how to protect yourself, learning how to release. And I, I've taught you some of this stuff, I feel like maybe a year or two ago, but I'm sure you probably don't remember how to do these things. But um, I feel like it is time for you to start growing your gifts and learning, at least learning how to protect yourself and learning how to disconnect cords because sometimes your environment that you reside in could be toxic or unhealthy. I mean, but that could be for anybody. You know, you could live with anybody and they're, they're, if you have a household full of people, there are going to be times when the energy is a little toxic. It just is. That's just how family dynamics work. You know, there are going to be times when things are awesome and there are going to be times when things are hellacious and you just want to run away. Okay. So when the times come and things are hellacious, you're going to have to learn how to protect yourself. You're going to have to learn what you need to be doing so that um, that energy doesn't jump off on you so that you're not walking around being a collector of other people's energy. And then every time I see you, you're full of everybody else's crap because that's what all it is, was today. You know, everybody else's crap, you know? And so, um, so definitely, I mean, some of the things that you can do to protect yourself is to put up your protection devices. If you want to use a rose, you know, roses are easy and I teach roses because that keeps you kind of like in a kindergarten space. Um, 
but you can use a protection rose and you can envision your aura and envision it to be maybe three fat feet out in front of you, around you, above you, and beneath you. That could be your aura, right? And just put a big protection rose outside of your aura. And that rose can be as big as you want it to be, whatever color you want it to be. You tell it what the rules are. Now, the rules are to protect your space. You, the rules are when, when somebody else um, sends energy your way that that rose takes that person's energy and allows it to go all the way down to the center of the earth where it can be neutralized. So it's neutralized down there at the center of the earth. It's like they got a neutralization factory. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm sorry. Okay. And then the energy goes back to where it came from. So it gets returned to sender. So you neutralize it first, right? Because you don't want to send back crappy energy. Somebody send you some crappy energy and then you go send it right back to them. I mean, not unless they deliberately sent you some crappy energy. Now that's a whole nother story. So <laughs> that is another lesson. And that's about karmic balance. So but, you know, so you neutralize it, send it back. We neutralize, send it back to sender, okay? Just return it to sender. And that's one thing that you can do um, when answering the phone. You can put a rose, a little protection rose up to your ear so that you see that name on the phone. You already know it could be some drama. Put that rose up. Even if you don't know, because energy everybody's energy doesn't belong in your space. Your energy belongs in your space. So even if the person is not full of drama, their energy still doesn't belong in your space. So you should put your protection rose up before you answer the phone because that person's energy, that person's energy is going to be all up in your space. Okay. Um, even when you're watching and, and now this is, off topic and actually i'm just going to do another video on this because this is totally off to topic so i'm not even going to go there but um definitely after you get off the phone after you have a conversation with somebody um after you go to the mall after you're in a restaurant with a lot of people um after you go into a shop or something after you go into like before you go into like a metaphysical stop, shop and after like before you go in make sure your protections up and when you come out you want to create and destroy some roses to release the energy that may have kind of linked to you while you were in the shop so creating and destroying roses i think i've taught you this before um you just look out on that imaginary screen out in front of you you inhale and on the exhale, you can breathe the energy of the situation, the phone call, the whatever, the conversation, how you feel, whatever, the energy of whatever. You can just give the, the breath whatever the intention is. Um, so let's say you walk out of the store and, and you say, okay, any energy that kind of linked to me while I was in that store, let's release that energy. So just and create a rose, create a rose out on that imaginary screen, see it, see what color it is, whatever, and then destroy the rose, poof, you know, destroy it however you like. I tell the story all the time. I used to be a perfectionist, so if I blew the rose up and I saw a petal floating here and a petal floating there, then in my mind, I'm chasing the petals, trying to blow the petals up. I'm like, ah! you know it's still a piece of energy floating you know so <laughs> so i started i mean i've done so many things i used to take like a machine gun go boom you know trying to like and then if i would have a whole lot of energy that i wanted to release like i would put like a whole lot of roses up like maybe a, a rose bush and i would shoot up all those roses blowing up all that energy but then, like I said, that those perfect pictures of mine that I used to have, I would see the pieces of petals floating. So then I started lighting them up and then letting it go to ashes and bye-bye, bye-bye rose, okay? So do whatever you want to do, okay? You might not have perfect pictures. You could probably just go like that and the rose be gone, okay? <laughs> so do whatever you got to do. I don't have to do all that stuff now. You know, now it's just like, whatever, poof, be gone. <laughs> So do it however you like, but release the energy. Release the energy of people that come in your path or whatever so that your space can be your space. And one thing that I want you to start doing 
to get on your path, um, this called card, card, I want you to start doing some type of meditation um, either every morning or every night, even if it's just for a few minutes. Um, chanting is a form of meditation and it just allows you to be still um, and just to receive. Sometimes I chant a mantra and I might chant it 108 times. And honestly, once I get into the mantra, like maybe it, it may take me a minute to, to chant the mantra that long, but a few minutes into the mantra, then I, I feel like peace and I feel the stress and junk and whatever just start to release from me like the energies or whatever that might have been come on me or whatever through my day I just see them go away and then I get more in a relaxed state you know more into chanting you know so you could do you could chant you know if, if that's easy for you I know um if you practice, I don't know what your spiritual practices are, um, um, but many people practice um, Buddhism, SGI Buddhism. And when you practice SGI Buddhism, I mean, you can, to practice Buddhism, you can be any religion, you know, um, to practice and still practice Buddhism. Um, and I remember the young lady that introduced me to uh, Buddhism, she was, Jewish, so she called herself a Jubu. <laughs> I used to be like, okay, girl. Um, and this is when I was in tax Texas, and I know all of y'all heard Tina Turner and Nam Yo Renge Kyo, right? So you can chant Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo, okay? Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo. Um, you can do that to um, to just meditate and release, you know, to just release everybody else's stuff and just just be one with God. You know what I mean? So, so those are some of the things you could do. You could do a guided visualization. I have some of them on my channel. Um, I have CDs, you know, but you can find guided visualization almost anywhere on YouTube, you know, and you could do a guided visualization type of release thing. You could just sit and be quiet and listen to some frequency, some high, some frequency music. You know what I mean? You can, there are plenty of frequency music um, things on YouTube where you can listen to some different frequencies. Let me see. I'm trying to, I don't, I, I would have to just send you some, just if you don't know what I'm talking about, just um, inbox me, email me or something like that. Just ask me for it and I'll give you the different frequencies that you could do. But I need you to start doing something. <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to start doing something um, at least in the morning or at night or both for a few minutes each time. Do some type of meditation and journaling. I want you to start journaling um, whatever comes to you, okay? Now, when, um, when people journal, I usually recommend that you do not put a bunch of negativity in your journal and keep it. <clears throat> the things that are negative, I would suggest you just write them on a piece of paper if you just need to get it out and then burn it safely, you know, in a steel dish or something. Um, that's what I would suggest if you are writing negative things. I, I feel like you manifest with words and you manifest with thoughts and you manifest with actions and you manifest with energy. And, um, and, and many other different ways, like acting as if you are already there. So if you put a whole lot of energy into writing and it's all negative, and maybe you're speaking negatively about yourself or something, then you're actually breathing life to that. You know what I mean? Through words and through writing. Writing helps with the manifestation process. So that's why I'm saying that if it's negative, then if you do feel like you need to get it out and write it down, then burn it and release it, you know, otherwise you're holding on to it. So you've given life to it and now you're holding the life in the book. Okay. So release it and let it go. But positive things, you know, definitely keep them in your journal. Gratitude. It would be nice to write a couple of gratitude statements every day, you know, you, three to five, you know, things that you're grateful for. 
And, you know, if, if you can't think of them, one is I woke up today. <laughs> you know, that's always a great one for everybody because you didn't have to, you know, that, that didn't have to be <laughs> given to you. You didn't have to wake up today. So that's a good thing. You know, it's so many things to be grateful for, you know, and people don't even recognize them sometimes that life is not so bad. I know right now so many people are so irritated and miserable and depressed and down in the dumps and all of this. And I'm like, shoot, I like working from home. <laughs> I'm like, can we stay like this? <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So um, let me get back to your healing now. So those are some of the things that I want you to do um, on your two cards, okay? All right, now let me look at you. All right, so now I am going to do a healing on your energy centers. And I'm just releasing any stuck energy, cleaning them all off, the main ones. The main ones that people talk about, I should say. And now I'm just working with the frequency in your body. And I'm just making sure that the frequencies are serving your highest good. Wow. When I did that, I saw like the energy just pushing out. It was like your, your being was naturally just pushing it out. Your body liked that. So we're going to, I'm going to remember to do that with you. We'll do a frequency check on you. All right. So let me write down who I'm talking to. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, and it was like an orangey color. It really looked nice. It made you look like, like, um, kind of goldy, like between lemon yellow, like a light baby yellowish to goldy. Yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. So now let me check for chords. Okay. So there's a chord at your fifth, at your throat. And I'm just releasing the chord. And yeah, all right, there we go. Third and second. Two with your mother, one was with your sister. And so, you know, again, these are things you're going to have to learn how to do, you know, because when you live with people, you're going to court each other all the time, you know? And so you're going to have to learn how to protect your space. You're going to have to learn how to check to see if you are courted. You know, you're going to have to learn how to check to see if you have been courted. And then if you have been, you're going to have to do the the, the exercises to release the cords, you know? So, 
And, and I mean, that's just that. I mean, because people will court you a, a stranger could court you. I'm, I'm just being honest, you know? So the courting could really, really, I mean, this is something that you're going to have to work on because it's going to continue to happen. You're going to continue to get courted and recorded with those, with your loved ones. It's, it's natural. It's normal. It's, it just is. Okay. All right. But we have released the cores. We have healed where they were connected. When you let a cord go, okay, so the cords, just in case you are not aware or you don't recall what, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a cord, the cord is a connection between you and another, another person. So like, let's say that we're corded in here in our throat area. Um, that means that another person is um, sending energy to you and you're sending energy to the person. So you can send energy back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Um, through these cords. So you were corded in three different areas. So in a, so whatever energy is coming through this way, it could be, um, you could feel like you can't talk. You're not free to talk. You know what I mean? Somebody else's voice might be imposed on you. Maybe that's why I was feeling or hearing something that you weren't having free will, um, that barrier that was around you. I was hearing that you weren't having free will or it wasn't, uh, it was preventing you from having free will or something. But anyway, um, in here, you know, you might not feel free to say what you want to say. You might feel muffled. You might feel like you don't have a voice. Okay. When someone is courting you right here and you might not, understand what you're hearing you might be confused as to what you should be doing because you're not going to hear clearly like from the holy spirit within you're not going to hear clearly if you're hearing somebody else's stuff you know what i mean so your stuff is intertwined with somebody else so you got this entanglement going on with your energy and somebody else's energy that's why other people's energy don't be doesn't belong in your space and you don't need to be walking around courting courted to others you know and you may be imposing how you feel on somebody else and that's not fair to them you know what i mean they might be not able to hear clearly because your energy is all in their space you know so um i feel like it was the reverse i feel like um you were the one that was courted and the other person's energy is affecting your space, but I was just giving you the scenario of how it could be in reverse, but the way it is for you, um, intuitively, I'm getting what I said initially, that their energy is preventing you from hearing your truth and from speaking your truth, okay? So anyway, so that has been released, okay? <laughs> When you're stuck and when you're corded in the second, third, you don't want your second and third chakras to be blocked and you don't want to be corded there because those chakras affect your money. Okay. <laughs> and I know I don't have nothing affecting my money. Those two chakras have to stay cleared, clean and unblocked, you know, no cording up in there, okay? Because they affect your money. You want that to be clean and clear. Sometimes people cord you in that area um, and because, or you may cord someone else in that area uh, to heal them. You know, there might be some healing going back and forth and then the cording may take place, especially in that second chakra or energy center, whatever you want to call it. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so... Um, definitely clean off your chakras or energy centers, whatever you want to call them, and um, and make sure you're not corded in in those areas. Okay. So anyway, we did release them, but I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. So overall, I'm feeling like this is a way better energy check than I've seen um, for you which is a good thing. I keep getting the same card for you. So that means that you're still not take, taking the advice. You're not working on your gifts. So I'm just going to say it every time they pull the card, every time, because I didn't pluck these cards, these cards jumped out. So that's what jumped out for you. So that is what 
your ancestors, that is what your spirit guides, your angels, that's what they wanted you to know. And this keeps happening for you. So please start working on yourself. Okay. So anyway, um, I am going to send some healing through you and then I'm going to go to your sister. So let's do that. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Okay. Okie dokie. So, all right, I am going to look at you now. Okay. All right, so when I look at you, all right, so when I look at you, I actually started feeling something. Um, when I look at you, I see a brightness. So I see brightness all over here. Um, there's some stuck energy coming up in here. Um, so I feel the tension over here. So you would have the tension on the opposite side, but I feel the tension, that energy that I saw in here is affecting the tension in your neck. Um, and it's going up towards my ear. It's just like stress and tension and, and it goes diagonal. So it's kind of like going across my neck in this way up towards my ear. So on you will be the opposite. It will be on your left side. It will be from your left side going up. Mine is from this side in the back going up. All right. Well, I should say yours would be from the right side going up to your left side okay that's where you would be feeling the tension in your body okay so anyway this is stress you hold on to stress and I feel it right in here in my like back here so this feels like a chord okay so I'm hearing this is a chord and I'm hearing eight years ago so um, there's a cording their remembrance so like you're retracing this is a different kind of chord than somebody cord and connecting to you this is a retracing so when you like um like eight years ago there was something that happened that you anchored your emotions into that something that happened eight years ago and you have a remembrance of it and and it brings tension to your neck okay so you would get so i was feeling it here you would have it here so you would have this tension that straddles like goes diagonally um in your back and your neck all the way up to here you know even though i was feeling it here because i feel on the opposite side then you would have it in your body um and it's a remembrance so it is not an energy that has manifested into a physical thing i'm hearing it could manifest into a physical thing all right and it sometimes you sometimes feel the stress and tension on your whole neck in the back you know what I mean? Like you, you like you're one of those that would like somebody to come massage your neck, okay? Because like you will hold that stress and tension back there. Like me, I hate that. I don't, but I'm not. I very few people can massage me because I don't like other people's energy penetrating into my body it my body doesn't like it um so very few people can do massage on me and it has to be a certain way um but anyway but you're you would like someone to massage your neck because it helps you to not feel this um 
and again this comes from something that took place eight years ago and you retrace it you you relive it you you anchor in it you know you have anchored your journey in this old thing um where you have not released and let go you have not forgiven that's what i'm hearing you have not forgiven you have not released and you have not let go you hold on to it you anchor in it and you relive it you keep talking about it even if it's just in your head it has created some of who you are today it's created some of the decisions that you made in your life um it cr has created a belief set that you have and i'm feeling like the words i'm getting is false belief set so it feels like you have created a scenario in your mind as to what is and you're incorrect about what is you perceived whatever happened eight years ago in a way and because of the way you perceived what happened you have created this uh i'm hearing the word illusion but you've created your reality surrounding how you perceive something that took place eight years ago so anyway um sometimes it's hard to undo how you feel how you think or whatever but you could also just try to forgive whoever is involved in this scenario forgive okay and truly forgive because what good is it not to forgive i mean like you know what i mean people have done some of the horrible most horrible things to me and i just i forgive them but i don't forget anymore i used to forget i used to forgive and forget okay and that's not so good you know what i mean <laughs> then they can come back and do it to you again because those stupid bud done forgot what the hell they did and that's what would happen so i don't forget anymore um but you know i i want you to work on some forgiveness exercises so one thing you can do is write a letter to whomever it is that you feel wronged you and explain how you felt about the scenario explain how you perceive the scenario and you can choose to send the letter to the person or not you can choose to have a conversation with the person and ask the person to zip it up and listen because that's a big issue with many people they don't know how to listen you know um some people are so focused on what they need to say that they don't even hear what you're saying you know and um <laughs> so um if you do um talk to the person you might even want to have a mediator that can help you both to listen because listening listening is a skill that most people have to learn how to do. I'm sorry, I just kicked my, <laughs> I just kicked my shoe off. So anyway, um, so listening is a skill. Um, and I know when I used to teach people how to be successful in business back in the day, um, one of the things I had to teach them was how to listen, especially when they were doing sales. You have to listen. You have to know your customer. You have to listen to your customer. How are you going to know your customer if you always talk? Okay, you're not gonna know your customer. All you're gonna know is, I mean, you're really not gonna know anything. So you may wanna have a mediator. I say all that to say that, um, so that you all can both listen. If you don't have someone who can be a mediator, can you just tell whoever it is before you get started that it is very important that you hear me out. It is very important that neither of us becomes defensive because I just need to share so that I can release this. I can fully forgive, release, and let this go. And I don't want to argue, you know, this is going to be me just sharing how I feel. And it, it would be better if the receiver could just say, thank you. I love you. You know, thank you. And I love you. I receive that. And I love you. And then maybe after you finish, then the other person can share and then your response is thank you i love you because it's not about you winning this argument them winning this argument it's not about that you have to release this and and let it go and they may need to release and let go as well and then if you all 
are not seeing eye to eye on this matter that took place eight years ago, then it is this time that you agree to disagree, release, let go, forgive, move on, okay? You're very young and you got a whole lot of life ahead of you and you will make your life, you will make your life, this person that did whatever you perceived that they did eight years ago, they are not making your life miserable. You are because you're responsible for your life. You're responsible for your decisions. You're responsible for your thoughts. You're responsible for your ideas. You're re responsible for what you do. You are, not somebody else. You're responsible for how you perceive this. You're responsible for late releasing this and letting this go. You know, it is not on the other person. They don't have to agree with you or disagree with you. That's not what this is about. This is about you getting it out, being heard, and letting that go. Them getting it out, being heard, and letting that go. No elevations of tones. Sometimes you may cry. That's why it might be good to have a mediator for this thing. Um, but I do feel that this needs to happen because I feel like I have felt uh, this um, cording, this cord in your neck before. I feel like I felt it before. I'm not positive, but um, you can go, you can tell me because I, I don't always remember, but I, I do feel like I might have felt this before for you. And this would be your next step um, to finally release this old thing. Because, you know, if you can't let go of yesterday and just learn from it and move on, then you're going to stay in yesterday. Now, how old were you eight years ago? Do you, would you like to stay that age forever? You know what I mean? Because you're growing up, you're getting older, you know, but, but if you keep living back there, then you're, you're not going to be moving forward in life. You have to release yesterday so that you can grow today. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, so I'm gonna tell you um, the cards that I got and then I'm gonna go back to your space and do some healing, chakra healing, cord cutting and all that good stuff. Okay, so the first card that I got is what Spirit wants you to know and it says messenger, all right? And it looks like some figure that may have long hair i don't know um and it looks kind of like angelic okay and it's a messenger serious energy and um bringing harmony and balance and what i got from this card um that fell out for you was that there needs to be a balance of the feminine and masculine energy um, within your body. Sometimes you um, display more of one or the other. And right now it's just a time to be balanced, you know, and it is okay to be balanced. It is okay to show feminine energy <clears throat> and it's okay to show masculine energy because we work with both. Um, it is okay to use your mind to think but it is definitely also okay to use your intuition, you know, use what you feel in your gut to trust yourself, to trust yourself subconscious, trust what's going on, you know, trust your path, you know, trust that it is okay to give and receive love and that you're not going to be hurt again, you know? So that's what I get from that for you. And then the other card I got is you got the love. You got the love, okay? And that picture looks like several people. And it says codependency or um, and boundaries and Hadarian energy. So what I got from that card was that um, I got a few things. Number one was the boundaries. It was that you needed to set boundaries. You need to set boundaries for yourself, set boundaries in your life. Um, 
I feel like there's there are others involved. Maybe um, I'm hearing and this is totally not on topic. <laughs> but what I'm hearing is that when you, when you like someone that you do not um, set the boundaries properly, you do not allow the, the mate to be the mate, to seek you, to um <clears throat> to kind of chase you so to speak to come for you to to show that they're deserving of you um you kind of give more of your all before you know that the person is even worthy of being with you and I'm feeling like sometimes you don't feel that you're worthy or that you deserve. So I do feel that a little bit. Um, from the card, it also mentioned codependency. And I feel like you intertwine the energies with your mother. You and your mother have intertwining energies. And sometimes you kind of take on her role um, or you feel like you are, it's kind of like you all kind of channel each other and your brother keeps coming up in my head. So sometimes you're, you're feeling like you're having to be a support system for him or something. So anyway, so let, we'll see what else we get, um, as I go through your clearing and your healing. Okay since we're doing an energy check today. All right, so let me look, let me look, let me look. Okay, so you still look bright. I see this bar going up in here. You look bright though. This bar, this is not the same thing that I saw a little while ago when I was feeling all that cord stuff. This bar looks like a stairwell, like a bridge or something. Like it goes up, it's gray, it's in your space. It's kind of... It's just an energy that's blocking your space. Okay, let's see. What does this energy do in your space? It's really just a block. It's just blocked energy that's in your space. I'm hearing it comes from outside of you and within you. So, and I'm feeling like it, is connected to this because I just felt this and I'm feeling like this is a bridge and then I see like these column things so it's like this bridge okay so when I'm feeling this I feel pain and stuck energy when I feel this structure thing okay and as I go up I feel more energy so it, the energy in intensifies as I go up this structure that's in your space. When I come closer to the body, I feel pain energy, but pressure. It's like a pressure energy. I'm feeling like you store it and it's been building. It feels like, <laughs> like, like, let's say this is like the 11 year old thing. I mean, the eight year old thing is eight. You, okay. So let's say this is like an eight year old thing, right? Like it feels like it's grown and kind of taken on life and it gets more intense. But here it felt painish. Like when it first started, like there was the pain, the emotional pain of the situation. But then over the years, it's grown and it feels more intense, not as painful, but more intense. But the pain still is down, <clears throat> down at the beginning of it. The pain body still exists. Excuse me. 
So the pain still exists. The pain never went anywhere. You never released the pain. Sometimes you still cry about the situation. You have balled yourself up in the situation. And this is the intertwining situation with your mom. The inter, like codependent, interchangeable feelings with your mom. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the song I hear in my head is, and I don't even know if these are the words, but this is what I hear. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. I don't know. Like, were those the words to the song? But that's what I hear in my head. Like, it's time for this bridge to be over. It's time for you to release this and let this go. This long-standing drama field connection, crippity crap that has just been blown out of proportion. This is what I'm hearing. Blown out of proportion over the years. And it just kind of gets bitter. Like it's growing up. Like it's, you're rearing up a monster of a, <laughs> looks like a bridge. <laughs> but it, it just feels like this is growing. You know, it's going upward, came upward with you, started here going upward. So I'm feeling like this needs to go, okay? It's time. It's time for this to end. It, it is really time. You've got to release and let this go. So do start doing those forgiveness exercises. I am going to release this bridge of thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw what it looks like. Okay. So, well, it kind of looks just like what I said. <laughs> okay. Okay, so these are little column things. Don't be laughing at my drawing neither when you see it because it looks great, great. All right, so it just looks like a bridge like this. Okay, so it looks like a bridge that goes up. That's kind of like what I was, okay. Then, you know, the lines beneath it, I guess those are the like, the foundation or something. It, they get taller, you know, because it's going up, 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 and it gets more intense as it goes up. All right. So I'm going to bulldoze your bridge. Okay. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm going to do a little healing on that time period back here. God, this feels like deja vu. I feel like we did some healing. I feel like we did some healing for you before. I do feel like that. But this bridge, this thing still stands. All right. I'm going to take the bridge down. Because this is like a crutch. We stay with this stuck energy and it's serving no purpose except to bring about chaos. That's what I hear. Chaos. Oh. Excuse me. All right, I'm just going to eight years ago and I'm just gonna focus on this time. And I'm gonna see the people involved in this scenario. And actually, I'm just going to do a family healing at this time because this time is breeding life to nonsense in the present, okay? So I, it was like starburst of energy coming out of the scenario, energy just rising up from the different individuals. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh my.
Let me look at you. I'm gonna go to where this tracing is taking place. When I release that, I feel pain, okay? So you definitely anchor in the pain of it, okay? All right, let me. Excuse me, my stars. Okay. Okay, courting is at six, three, two, okay. One is your brother, two is your, two are your mom. Uh, now courting at your, whew, Courting at your um, Ajna in this area, that's not a good idea. Um, because then you're not able to see clearly, you know, your, your path will be cloudy because you're going to have somebody else's energy competing with yours, you know, going back and forth, back and forth. It could cause you to be mentally drained uh, because you're being fatigued with somebody else's mental energy, you know, going back and forth, you know? So you and the other person could be mentally drained. <sighs> okay. So you've got to really watch that. Okay. I know you're not into spiritual stuff. Um, so that's why I recommend some things to you and you're not into spiritual things i'm trying to think what could we do to protect your chakras okay so i would recommend stones like if you like stones like this you know like a this is a black tourmaline. These are all natural stones, all different kind, you know. So different natural stones could help protect your space. Black tourmaline can help protect your space so that other people's energy doesn't just go into your space. You can write that, you can write some affirmations and speak affirmations. You can speak out to God and say what it is that you desire for your space. You know, I desire for my space to be mine <laughs> and not to be clouded with somebody else's. You know, God, if anybody else is connecting with me and it's not serving my highest good, please disconnect it. You know, so just pray to God. And do that however you, I don't know how to say it in, not, in a non-woo <laughs> kind of way. So um, I don't know how to say that, but you can do it however you like. You know, pray that nobody connects with you in that way. You know, I don't know how to say it, I, honestly. <laughs> I really don't know how to say it any different than that. And I just hope that you listen because um, being connected with somebody here is not a good idea. I'm just saying, that's like one of the worst places to connect with somebody, you know? So if you've been feeling mentally exhausted and you don't know why, but that's why, because you're, you're carrying you and somebody else, you know? So, all right, what else? I heard six, three, and two, let me see those. I'm going to send some healing energy through your body. 
make sure that I'm working on all your energy centers. Let me look at your spiritual cord. Okay. So it is okay. You know, I, I feel like the last time I looked at it, it was very tiny. Um, it is okay right now. I'm hearing, even if you don't believe, you will still receive what it is that you desire and what it is that you need at, at this time. <sighs> All right, so I'm just finishing up the chakras or energy centers in your body. All right, now I'm gonna do your frequency and balance it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And raise it up. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, so I see the light, the yellow. Okay, so it must be yellow when the frequency is raised and stabilized and everything. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good. Okay, got a little pain in my head. Okay, as we're working on the frequency, got a little pain in my head. So I had it on this side, you would have pain on this side. <laughs> but I'm just gonna clear it out. Okay. Yeah, your spiritual cord. I'm really happy your spiritual cord is still there <laughs> and working. I think the last time it was like this, you know, like less wide than my ponytail. It was like this. <laughs> All right. It's still doing its thing. Thank you, God. Ah. <sighs> All right, so you look pretty good, you look pretty good. All right, let's see. I am going to see if we can do a next step for the two of you guys. Let's do a next step. And then we will close out, we will close out. I'm gonna burn some sage. Uh-oh. Okie dokie. So we got some jumpers. Okay, so the next step for the male in this session, this is what it looks like. It says woman holding a heart. Okay, woman holding a heart. All right, so this lady has a butterfly in her hair. The heart is pretty and never thigh. Oh, there's a lot going on in this picture. She's got a heart on her arm. So let's see, what do I feel? I feel like your heart is solid the your your you have what it what you need um to move on i feel like things are going to be healed things are going to um move in a positive direction i feel like things are going to move in a positive direction for you I'm going to read what it says. Um, all right. So it says dealing with family, love, or emotions. So this part right here is what I'm going to read to you. Um, it says this card upright could also indicate, because this is the part that I feel pertains to you. It says this card upright could also indicate the presence of a female friend, teacher, or confidant who's here to help with issues of love, family, or emotion. This is an even-tempered and caring person who resonates with you, 
you and your emotions. And the second part is this could also pretend a new love interest or friend coming your way. I feel like it's both of those. I do. I feel like it's both of those so that like, and they may or might, may not be the same person. Um, but I do feel like you're going to receive the help that you require to help you continue growing on your path. And I feel like it'll be a person that comes in that's more in alignment with um, alternative wellness and healing and more in alignment with this world and they're gonna relate to you and you're going to feel comfortable sharing with them. And I just feel like um, this is gonna help you to move more in the direction that you're supposed to move into. I'm hearing that three weeks I'm hearing that um, you, this help new friend whatever can arrive okay now the one that I got for the female in this session it's called third chakra Archangel um, Shemuel okay let's see what that's talking about Let's see, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna read it out loud and then we'll see what jumps at us. Emotions of desire, life force, energy. Upright, the powerful Archangel Shamuel is holding a beautiful sphere of golden light at the solar plexus, which is the location of your third chakra and the center of your life force energy. The issues here revolve around, uh-oh. The issues here revolve around emotions of desires and your personal energy. When this card appears upright, it indicates that an increased enthusiasm is present or soon to be on its way. This is a great time to move towards the completion of your desires. Your life force is vibrating with power, power and resonance, and your soul is calling you to direct your energy in a focused, purpose, purposeful manner. This angel of power is with you now, so go for it, okay? And your affirmation is, my third chakra is open to its perfect, healthy state. I radiate a bright and vibrant life force energy. I feel excitement for all that I do. And I feel like that one's for both of you, honestly, um, especially after I did the frequency healing, like you guys both were vibrating so vibrantly, kind of like the colors in this card, okay? And, um, and I just feel like you're both ready. Um, the, um, I feel like this one the issues will be resolved you know i feel like they will be resolved for both of you i feel like these cards are for both of you not for one and then for the other because i i do feel like you know now um both of you are going to have more clarity your intuition is going to flow a little bit better um you're going to know more what it is that you um should be doing that was what the beginning of this card was about i didn't read it but i do feel like it is for both of you guys you're going to be more clear now about where you you should be going because we have released those connections and 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 did that frequency that really lit y'all up I, I like that i'm gonna do that again all right so anyway um and but i, I really feel like y'all are on the right track the right path for a real solid foundation for for your um 
your future. And then the other affirmation is, I am emotionally calm and peaceful, and I attract healthy and stable people to me. Healthy and stable people. So, um, but just remember, keep your protection up, protection rose in front of your space, and then get a new rose, you know, every day, drop that rose down to the center of the earth, allow it to neutralize, and then create a new rose, you know what I mean, out in front of your space, make sure you put your rose up in front of your phone before you answer the calls, you know, make sure you create and destroy roses after you get off the phone, after you get out of a place that has a whole lot of people, especially you, the, the sun in this scenario, <laughs> okay? Um, because you're pretty empathic and people's energy jumps all over you and you've got to keep your protection up. Now, whoever is sending you protection, um, they should stop um, because it just put a wall around you and we really don't want to do that. Not like a black solid wall. That's not a good idea. Okay. Um, and just pray that your space can remain your space, you know, say it in whatever way, ways you want to say it, but you have to pray that only your energy should reside in your space. And no cords and connections, you know, no ties that are binding you to somebody else. And, and then give thanks for the healing and the releasing of those things that took place eight years ago or six years ago. Um, and, 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 and work on the, um, the letter, maybe. That was just a suggestion. You might have another idea. Don't forget, it might be better to have a mediator, okay? And a mediator that's not involved in the scenario. So, so a third party that is neutral, that doesn't have one side or the other, because you don't want somebody who's biased trying to mediate the scenario, because then it could just be a gang bang, you know, ganging up on somebody, and that's not that's not healthy and that's not going to resolve anything. Or you could choose to just write it down and burn it up and release it and let it go. So you can choose to do um, your healing and forgiveness process however you desire to do that. All righty. So I hope you guys, both of you, um, got some value from this session. I know you're going to feel better. Um, especially in your neck area, woo, 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 woo. you know, some deep breaths, inhale and exhale is really, really good. Um, learning how to um, clean your chakras off and maybe, you know, once a month you can get um, a quick healing or energy check and to make sure that you're not corded, okay? Because I'm going to tell you that cording is going to go back and forth until you all do something to to stop it okay i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe i hope you all those are you who are viewing this um just to get some information and some clarity these sessions could definitely help any of you you know so definitely like subscribe you know share this with somebody i feel I, I feel like I said something strange just a minute ago about recording it or something. I don't know what the heck I was just saying. But anyway, um, but anyway, if you feel like um, anything that I've shared in this session could help somebody else, please share the video with somebody else. You know, somebody else might be going through a situation where they live with family and, you know, <laughs> They just need to escape, <laughs> but they can't. All right. And, and, you know, we will go into manifesting how you can manifest your escape. All right. But anyway, y'all, I hope you had a wonderful time and peace.